This is the first potato battery I've ever built. I've got all sorts of bits of metal stuck in it. Let's have a close-up look. This is an Australian $1 coin. It's sort of goldish in colour. Then an Australian 20 cent piece. I've got some nails. I'm guessing this is an iron nail. There's a smaller one. Here is some, um, I think it's galvanised garden tie wire, about a millimetre thick. And right here is some brass strip. Now this is available from hardware shops. It's used to fasten electrical cables, so it's got a nail going through the middle of it. But yeah, I've just got the brass just poked into the potato. I'll just take it out so you can see how much, about about three centimetres going in. And I've just sanded it so it's reasonably clean. Same with the garden tie wire. First thing I'll do is see what voltages I can get. Different metals are going to have different potential differences. Um, just having a look here, I'm on a maximum 4 volt range. Between the two coins, although they look different, there's really not much of a voltage. If I go between the $1 coin and the galvanised wire, we're almost 1 volt. 0.968 of a volt, which is pretty good. Now we'll just try some other um, differences. Uh, this nail here, what I said was the iron nail, 0.575 of a volt. Uh, just trying the two coins again, not much there. What if I was to try the 20 cent piece there and the galvanised wire? 0.962 of a volt. So I'll just compare it 0.962 and 0.962. The coins are almost identical. We'll now try the nail versus the galvanised wire. Not so much less than 0.4 of a volt. Now what about our brass strip here? This is a difference of 0.875. Now if I try the brass with something else, like the coin, it's much less, less than 0.1. Or between this nail here, 0.487. So, um, and between the brass and the galvanised wire here, 0.875. So the highest was between this wire and either that coin there or this coin here not so much with this nail uh, using this brass thing was pretty good as well either with respect to this galvanized wire this nail was a bit lower, less than 0.5 of a volt. And I go to here, it's slightly higher, 0.575. Here, 0.570. Here, 0.4. And between these two, not much at all. Hmm. Now, I haven't paid much attention to polarity. Okay, so let us see if we can work out what is the most positive thing. So far, it's the brass strip here. If we look at it relative to the nail here, it's still positive. 
What about this little nail here? Um, it's 0.4. Ah, there's a negative here. Okay. So this is slightly more positive than the brass strip. And what about this one? There's really not much difference between those two coins. Now if you put it on here, then that's negative. But if we compare this coin with that... Okay, so this 20 cent piece is positive, and this Y is negative. So, as far as I can tell, this 20 cent piece is the most positive connection. Um, I've got, so I've got the positive lead on there. Can I find anything that gives me a negative from that? No. Oh, this is slightly. Actually, I'll just try that and that. It's quite a big difference there between the galvanized wire and the dollar coin, 0.95. That's almost as much, just below 0.9. And this 0.34. So, I think that all that, they're pretty similar. Either the coins and this galvanized wire is about the best 0.94 of a volt. And the brass strip is only slightly less. Maybe the spacing would change it a little bit. Like these are fairly close. What if I was to stick this wire really close to the coin? Wonder if oh, I hope they're not touching, maybe like that. Uh, not much difference. Um, what if I put it further away, like over there? Very little difference. I have a few light bulbs, so I first of all tried them with a one to half volt battery. A couple I could get to dimly light. Then I tried with the potato battery and couldn't light any. So I think this was either too low voltage because it was only dim with the one to half volt battery, so with about 0.9 of a volt, it might not have even been able to be seen and probably also high internal resistance, so probably not capable of delivering very much current. So, how much current can this deliver? Well, for that we need a resistor. There's always the tongue test, and only the very slightest sensation with this battery. With the resistor in circuit, it's 3.9K, and the voltage drops to 0.28 of a volt. So 280 millivolts and 3.9K. Just see if we can work out what current is flowing. It's going to be very, very small. Can work it out with Ohm's law. Current equals voltage divided by resistance. So our voltage is 0.28 divided by 3900 equals a tiny fraction of an amp. Let's times it by a thousand to convert it to milliamps and 
it's well under a milliamp, 0.071, so it's about 70 microamps. Because I'm measuring current, I've had to change the position of the leads and the resistor. I've got the ammeter in series with the resistor, not across. And I've got a 40 milliamp maximum scale. And I'm getting 0.07 of a milliamp or 70 microamps. Now, if we multiply the 70 microamps with the 0.3 of a volt, approximately, the power is tiny. Milliwatts, maybe even microwatts. Now, I'll just probe around, looking not for increased voltage, but increased current. Right here, we've got the brass strip and the galvanized wire next to it, and that's a bit better. 110 microamps. I'll just probe here, and it's a similar value over here, and it drops. Maybe it's proximity, so what we'll do, I'll put that back on the coin, and then I'll move this wire to be much nearer the coin. Oh, that's about 90. So if I, I'll just put the, poke that in there. Okay, 140, so we're getting the most current with the galvanized wire right next to our brass strip. Now let's go back to our voltage measurement. And across the 3.9K resistor, we are just under half a volt. We've got the brass as being positive and the galvanized iron wire as being negative. I'll just remove the resistor. and about 760 millivolts. So it's very low current, although initially it looked promising with, you know, the voltage is quite good. If I had say four, five or six of these, I would have voltage that would be useful to power things. The current and therefore the power is still very, very low. If I tried different types of metal, maybe if I had a bigger surface area, maybe if I had two flat plates that would improve the current, and then you might be able to use a potato battery to power practical things and not just indications on multimeters. If you want to learn more about this, look up tables of galvanic or electropotential series of metals. Basically the more noble metals are cathodic and the least noble metals are anodic. Cathode being negative and anode being positive. And if you have metals that are as far as possible on the chart, then that will give you the highest potential difference. And all this is really important, not just for batteries, but if you've got things like dissimilar metals on, let's say, an antenna mast, then 
if you've got them together and they could cause harmonics in the presence of RF or they might corrode as well so yeah mixing dissimilar metals is both desirable if you're using them as a battery and undesirable if you want to prevent harmonics and corrosion so a lot more that you can read up and study on the galvanic series or electropotential series of different metals and if you do that then that can help you optimize any battery you want to build that's a quick look at a potato battery it is tea time but it doesn't look very appetizing with all these bits of metal in it so maybe I'll just leave it for future experiments. Let me know how you've gone in potato battery experiments. It would be really interesting to read them in the comments, especially if you've been able to power something practical. Enjoy these videos? Want to start in amateur radio? Well, check out my books, Ham Radio Get Started for USA readers and the Australian Ham Radio Handbook for those in Australia. For more information, visit my website, vk3ye.com, or search their titles on Amazon.